on salvage hunters. <laughs> it's either working or it's going to blow up. Things could be getting explosive for Drew as he goes in search of crazy collectors with things to sell. It's 100 quid a boat and you can have the frame for nothing. His own desire to collect threatens to get in the way of business. Oh, stop just buying cars. Stop next week. Buy this one. And leaves wife Rebecca less than happy. On a Series 1 Land Rover. Another car. I bought a car. Another car. How many cars can we have? Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. You have got the best place in the whole world. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> That's a mantique. There's nowhere he won't go and nothing he won't consider. With help from his wife, Rebecca... Yeah, he was telling me he drove in a tank. Now, if that's not midlife crisis, what is? And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems, which then find new homes in houses, okay, bars, restaurants, or even lighting up your street. Yeah! Drew's reputation is built on his ability to source items that no other dealer will have. This means he has to constantly think outside the usual antique dealer's box. But there's one type that almost always comes up with the goods for him. Compulsive collectors. In my line of work, you do meet a lot of collectors of all sorts of things, really, and I've got several people lined up for items that I buy all the time because these collectors are a backbone of my business and I need them as much as they need me. Can't get off the weather. It's following us, mate. Accompanied by his trusty sidekick, Julian, Drew sets off to meet a brand new contact who he hopes will become a regular supplier. They're taking a five-hour drive to Portsmouth to meet a man who's turned his obsession with collecting into a business, supplying costumes and period weapons to film companies. Good luck is following us, Julian. Good luck. <laughs> it's about bloody time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so it's the right down here. What's this guy called? Hamish. We're theatrical armourers, uh, prop manufacturers, costumiers, and we work in film, television and theatre. Apparently that's it. Hamish? Hey, yes. Drew. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi. Julian. Hello, Julian. Do you want to come on in, have yeah. a look around? Yeah, I'd love to. I'm love sorry to. about the mess, but uh, have to take us how you find us. No, no, that's fine, no problem. Quite a mix. Yes. We have equipment, clothing, armour, swords, shields, various kinds of props from ancient Greece, Spartans, right the way through the Roman era, medieval, through Victoriana, the Napoleonic Wars, World War I, World War II, the Gulf War, the Falklands War. This is completely different from downstairs. I've got you know, a whole floor just full of uniforms. This is all original stuff in here. Here's a test for you. One of these is original, one of them's reproduction. Oh, really? Original. Correct. Yeah, it was just the zip. Yeah, it's just good the giveaway. Only thing. Yeah. Well, there's an A2 in extremely really good, good condition. Good original condition, isn't it? And you can just oh, see wow. it had yeah, a painting yeah. of an eagle on the back. Commonly known as a bomber jacket, the A2 was designed in 1930 for use by the US Army Air Corps. Vintage examples like this can sell for upwards of 200 pounds. I've got a particular fascination with sort of uh, Second World War American flying jackets. They're good looking, they're comfortable and they're desirable and maybe even me could look good wearing one. Can I try it on? Try it, yeah. I was getting as excited as he was and I was begging for that thing not to fit him. It was too small. Just so it wouldn't be so painful when I said, no, it's not for sale. <laughs> but just how cool is that? It just feels, it just feels perfect, doesn't it, on? I really want one of these again. If I was going to buy the jacket, it's, there's no way I could even deceive myself by thinking it was going to be a buy for the business, because it really wouldn't be. It's for me. Well, am I all right to have just a sift through, then? Mm. And just, yeah. if I find something, I'll just shout out and say, what about this, what about that? Yeah, yeah, just have a, have a dig around. Antique weapons are a very specialised market, and one that Drew usually avoids. Walking around in his warehouse, there's boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff, most of it of no interest to me. It's mind-blowing, isn't it? You've got a fantastic stock of stuff. 
But suddenly, he discovers something that does pique his interest. Roman shields. Quite like these shields. Yeah, sort of 19th century yeah. house decor. Yeah, uh, they'd, they'd stick this up to aggrandise the living room, wouldn't they? Either side of the fireplace, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. Though not the real deal, these reproduction shields are just the kind of decorative item Drew's customers love and could bring around £100 each. These have been, you know, on the wall of many a film set and also, you know, with corporate functions when people are having a sort of medieval Christmas feast or something like that. These are really quite battered. Yeah, there's a couple of nice ones in there. The good ones, I should imagine I'd be able to get 100 quid for a good shield. Mm. The bits where they're damaged, you look at sort of 30, 40 quid. So you, you think you've got two at 100 pounds each? Yeah. And then and the, the rest was sort probably, of 30 quid. Yeah, 30 quid. So you're looking at 330, 360 for the pile. Something like that, yeah. Something like that. Could we do sort of 275? Um, I don't like the number five, so if we do 280, I'll let those go. OK. Will you chuck in the two knackered ones for the bits? Now, oddly enough, I was going to uh, suggest that you took those. I know that if I took them out and restored them myself, made the repairs, clean them up. I probably would get more money than that, selling them individually. But the fact that Drew's happy to come in, take the lot, take them away as they are, yeah, it's a, it's a deal. Hamish's collecting bug isn't just restricted to militaria, so it's off to his farm to see what his personal collection may have to offer. Just have a dig around in here, then. And on arrival, Drew heads straight for something that he just can't stop collecting. Just all landy parts in this side. Yeah, that's a, that's a complete Series 1. I'm looking for a Series 1 Landover. I want one. Did my best not to just, you know, drool all over it. But his business head takes over, and he resists the Land Rover. For now. There's some fairground stuff. Is that where oh, it's... Oh, I see. Never been used. Yeah. Well, they're quite good, aren't they? Yeah, they're the type that don't need an engine. You know, the children yeah. just sit on and pull on the pull street. The, rope. Uh, the whole thing's there. The frames there. All the poles, the poles, everything, the all carriages, supports. the rope. Yeah, the whole lot. You just need to pull a few of these things out and you'll be able to have a look. Yeah. There you go. It was an old set of swing boats. Vintage rides such as this rarely come onto the open market and can be difficult to sell. But the right buyer would pay around £1,800 for this pristine example. You don't know anything about its age. Did you, were you told anything by the people you got it from how old it is? These small rides for children, again, you're talking sort of late Victorian times, it became popular for, to have sort of kiddies rides. It's pre-engine, it's pre-motor. So how much is it for me to take a chance on it? Well, there's four boats. Um, so 100 quid a boat, and you can have the frame for nothing. <laughs> Jesus, that's really good of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> gee, thanks. Wait, well, the boats go. are bloody useless without the frame. <laughs> Let's meet in the middle. 350? Well, 350 for the frame, and you can have the boats for nothing. <laughs> that's a better deal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> £350 may be a lot for a ride that he hasn't even seen put together, but sometimes it's all about the gamble in salvage hunting. Yeah. Have a look in here. And the fun might not yet be over. There's still another shed. Swiss. Mm. Swiss. Uh, could that be sold? Yeah, they can go. Yeah. Drew knows that decorative items like this Victorian copper lantern could easily bring £200. This looks like it's made up of component parts. It's quite nice. I'd be looking for sort of, I don't know, 30, 40 quid for something like that. Oh, God, yeah, that's fine. That'll clean up nice. Yeah, that's fine. But I'll definitely take that one. That's quite nice, isn't it? It's a charming little thing. Children's toys are easy to sell, both to collectors and interior designers. This late 19th century example could easily fetch £160. I think we can all agree that it's been played with. Yeah, but not too bad. It's still got its ears. Price? I think I'll be wanting to get, like, 50 quid for that. It's got a metal head in there. That's a good toy, and it, it is all there. It's not knackered. Not going to knock you on the price for that. Yeah, we'll take Always that as popular. well. popular. Yeah, for sure. No, nope, have that. But the child's toy only seems to remind Drew of the big boy's toy he really wants, and it's back to the Land Rover. It's been partially disassembled, but everything is here. It's regularly started, so you only need to put the battery in and it will go. It will go, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Right. 
1952 Series 1 Land Rover like this could fetch upwards of £2,500 in its current condition. You've got the doors, yes. wings, yeah. bulkheads are all good. Windscreen is there, yeah. here, there, with the brown finish. I've been looking for one in this sort of condition, ideally complete and running, for a while. What would you want for it? Hamish clearly knows exactly what this is worth, and Drew knows it will be a difficult purchase to explain to wife Rebecca. His head is telling him to walk away. What would you want for it? Um. Well, I mean, we all know that uh, we can get a pretty good price for this if we continued and restored this. Yeah. I can see nearly everything for it. I know it's got no hood. There's no hood sticks or anything here. No, we haven't got the sticks for this I'll one. I'll take it away as it is. No. As, as it is, I'll just come here with a trailer and take it away. My whole sort of business plan and business brain has gone completely out of the window, and I'm just looking at it as something I want to buy. I suppose 2500 for it, because it's all there. Mm. I'll pay you £2,000. I'll take it as it is. It's not a business decision. It's, uh, it's a decision of the heart. OK, okay. you got a deal. Right, cheers. So it's Demons 1, Drew nothing. At least we got the bolts. Probably the most important thing of it. Not going to go together without them. And whilst Drew is doing the deal on the Land Rover, Julian is left to deal with the business of loading the dozens of pieces of the fairground ride. Jules, have we got any air for these? Can you, can you yeah. get those in? And that one, obviously, you know what it's like. Just be really careful with that. All oh, right, OK. All right. Just wrap, we could wrap them and put them in the gondolas. So Drew's bought a 60-year-old Land Rover in bits and a vintage fairground ride in bits. He can only hope that both gambles will pay off. OK, nice. we're done? Yep. All finished? All done, all loaded. Okay, cool. All right, all cheers, Hamish. Oh, it was a pleasure meeting you. No, no, really good, enjoyed it. Really no, enjoyed. I've enjoyed my day as well. Thank you very yeah, much. Nice. I haven't nice. bought such a weird collection of stuff in ages. <laughs> Got a series one Land Rover. You got, you got the toy you wanted. Fantastic. Land Rover pervert. Strikes again. <laughs> no, no. Back at base, online sales manager Mark, restorer Gavin, and Drew's wife Rebecca are eagerly waiting to see what treasures Drew and Julian have brought back. Fairground ride. <laughs> really? Yeah. No. It's a bit small, it's a kiddie one. Gonna have a fun day now, though. Ah. Drew Pritchard's fun day. <laughs> Drew Pritchard's world of fun. <laughs> you haven't seen it in full working order? No. No. Are all the bits there? It was underneath a pile of car parts. Oh. But, but um, by my reckoning, all the bits are there. You've got to put it together, again. <laughs> You've got to put it together. <laughs> <laughs> Two dead ones. It's a shield. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> No mention of the Land Rover so far. Maybe he's planning to use the shield as protection. They're real. He said so. They're real. But all the bits there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're real. Nice, aren't they? Just be careful with the couple of the details since we tightened up on them. Gaffer tape. Victorian gaffer tape. <laughs> I like that one. Absolutely genuine. I just thought they were good decorative things. I may be miles off and it may, may have given me some, I don't know, some drugs while I was there, but I think they're good. Oh. That's all right, isn't it? That's very nice. That's very, very, very nice. It's pretty, isn't it? Very. It's all original, not been messed about with, glass in the base. You know, give it to Ollie. They that's... copy those now, don't they? We put yeah. candles in them. Yeah, that's what I, I thought. thought. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. 19th century toy horse, probably German. But I just thought it was lovely. Sorry, charming, no. isn't it? It's absolutely charming. Can you manage that? Condition's quite yeah. good. Are you sure you're right with that? Go and get the trolley. It's quite, collect the quite collectible. Place? Same place. We got, um, we got that. We got the horse and the lamp. Drew's been stalling, but here it comes. And a Series 1 Land Rover. So should we get this off now? And a what? And a what? A Series 1 Land Rover. Yeah. Is that in a box in there, or is it a No, 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 no. It's really, really good. But all the bits are there. Just needs putting back together again. Same Great. as the fair ride, all the bits are there. All the bits, all the bits are, there. are there, yeah, you promised me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that long ago I was carting a Morris Minor uh, up the M6. Am I dragging a trailer around the country again to come and get no, it? No, I'll go and get it. Don't yeah. worry. It might fit in the back here. Seriously? Yeah, it's only a little one, 80-inch. Drew may have dodged a bullet for the Land Rover, but he didn't get the reaction he expected from Rebecca and the team for the rest of the haul. 
My only reservation um, were the shields. Drew's favourite saying is, trust me, which we do, and he normally is right. On a personal note, they were fine, but they didn't make me go, oh, you know, they're great. I do get um, a bit of a barracking from them when I've brought something that uh, they're not sure of, but what I love is that always the first thing that sells, or it sells well, and then we have people asking for more, and I love it, because it just, re just reminds them, know what I'm doing, get on with it. I can't wait to see the fairground ride set up, to be honest. That's, it's, it's so obvious, that's the one I want to see set up. Get Drew to test it out. Rather than hang around, Drew leaves the shop to Rebecca and plans his next excursion to see what Britain's crazy collectors have to offer. This afternoon we are in Norfolk, which is known for just being flat and farmland, isn't it, really? It's super quaint. With no clear idea of who he'll be dealing with, Drew can only hope he finds something without four wheels to appease his wife and team back home. We're off to see a guy called Nick. He's a property developer. Basically lived in Norfolk all my life. I'm a bit of a collector of junk, um, general memorabilia. And he's open to offers and deals on more or less anything and everything. So, it just sort of smells right. It looks like somewhere I want to go. And what Drew isn't telling Julian is that Nick also buys and sells old cars. This is it. Wow. Oh, yeah, this is great. Perfect. Hi, Drew. Yes, Nick. Hello, pleased to meet you. And you. How Thanks you for coming up. Bit of a no trip. Problem. Oh, yeah. Just hope there's something here of interest to you, really, yeah. so I can uh, show you around. So, where do you want to go first? Well, shall we start on the outside and have a look around? Store? Sure, go lead on. Inside. Let's do that first. OK. While the sun's shining. At the start, I didn't know where to take him, where to lead him, perhaps to identify something he might be interested in. No. no, all bust. Firstly, if I show you um, a mould I've just found in a, sure. in a local scrapyard, it's basically a Lotus 30. But the only part we haven't got is the, is the two doors. Would yeah. have been fun, wouldn't it? Would have been fun, yeah. Loads of fun. The mould is something I wouldn't want to buy. You need to get drawings and you need to confirm that is absolutely the right one. Because if it isn't the right one, it's worth nothing. Oh, we like those. They're yeah. very good. These came from a um, property on the North Norfolk coast. These are very, very similar to a pair I've got on my own house. A pair of stone gate posts like these from the Regency period could easily sell for around £600. They are really good and they're of good size, so they've come off a decent sized house, not just a basic little, what we'd call a field post. They're the front entrance way, you know? They're lovely. Are these something you could sell? I've actually sold those on. OK. Hey, you know, next time. That's a cricket pitch roller. I think you're right. That's got to be the width of the crease, hasn't it? Yeah. This would have had a seat, you know, those tractor seats on there with the name on the back, steel, the sprung seat, and you sit along there all day with the horse. Not something I could buy, though. It's an old clawfoot bath. That is part of cattle feeds. They're really common now. Really but... common. We cannot sell them. We had about 30-odd in the backyard, didn't we, at work? Here we've got some old slate fireplaces. Wales is full of these. So that was made just up the road from our shop. I have lots of them, so it's just sort of lying around. Not something I can move back that way, then. Definitely not. You'd have to pay me. This is a... Uh, turnstile. It does work. I mean, when it was upright, it did work perfectly. Yeah. Manchester company Ellison's patented their rush-proof turnstiles for football grounds in 1895. A similar example to this one was recently offered for sale on an internet auction site for £400. Was it something you want to yeah, sell or...? I I'd sell it. I think, you know, make me an offer, really. Yeah, it sort of fits in yeah. with my sort of theme of things we do. It's an oddment. Uh, it can be used in a bar or restaurant. It would just have to be cheap. Yeah. It would just be something cheap. It would be more or less scrap value, to be honest with you, yeah. because it would just be taking a chance on it. So it would be... As long as it's all there, I suppose it would be a 50 quid type of item. Yeah. 50 quid. I think that's... Really? Lovely. Yeah. All right, there you go. That's laid it's... around for so long. Oh, I've been that's asked, good. but I need to great. The there you go. 50 quid. Yeah. Though Nick's yard is packed full, Drew is finding precious little to buy. Maybe things not exposed to the weather will bring more luck. This is a clock came from... Um, I'm just going to light this. You like that, yeah? Yeah. That's good. 
The guy I purchased the clock from was basically from the Yarmouth area, and he'd given me some indication that during a refurbishment of one of the stations in Yarmouth, that had been thrown out. A station clock like this is hugely desirable to railway enthusiasts as well as designers and photographers. After a quick clean and new wiring, this clock will bring in close to £500. Have you had it working? Have you noticed you've got a plug on it? I haven't tried it. I mean, you can plug it in and give it a go. It's either working or it's going to blow up. Yeah, that's working fine. Turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be selling this on, so we've got to rewire it. People love to put those in their kitchens, and whenever I get one, it's sold like that. It's gone. I think I'd be fair with you. What if we said, um, really fair, £200? That is being really fair. Yeah? Yeah. Is that all right? That is a You're fantastic that. deal. Thank you yeah. very much. Probably going to leave it as it is. I, I like it as it is. Um, we're going to check the electrics out, though, because they're a bit... In this um, workshop we've got here, there's an old Land Rover. It's welding, yeah? That's it, that's, yeah, they always yeah, tend, tend yeah. to need a little bit of welding. Every Land Rover I get needs welding. So it's just bits and pieces, really, in here. Unless you want to buy a boat. Definitely not. Don't like boats, don't like the sea, don't like going in the sea at all. I think the sea's just full of things that are going to eat you. I like this, Nick. Oh, yeah, the waiting room sign, yeah. Depending on their size, antique signs can often fetch hundreds of pounds each. I like the fact that all the letters are sort of not quite straight. Yeah, they're all yeah, sort yeah, of a bit that's jumbled just a up bit badly put on. Ad hoc, aren't they? Yeah, quite like that. Is that for sale? Yeah, yeah. Again, I see. Yeah. Anything's for sale, really. What sort of price would you want for this? What again, would you like I think it? I quite like the idea of you bidding me. And... It's a good decorative piece for a bar, restaurant, uh, clothes shop. How does. Uh... 75 quid? Yeah, that is definitely... Is that all right? Good. Yes. Happy with that? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you very much. I like that. It's cool, isn't it? I like this as well. It's a really early 19th century English strapwork gate. Even simple iron gates are highly sought after in home restorations and can easily swing up to £150 each. Nothing fancy at all, nothing grand. Knocked up by the local blacksmith. Plain looks good, though, doesn't it? Really, you really plain. It it's charming. Somebody's... It's just... It's got a certain charm to it. thing, And it's still got the little latch thing on there as well. Look, a really charming little item, and I can sell that fairly easily, so... Yeah, I'm no, really it's good. Well, I'd like, again, it'd be nice to see somebody use it again. Oh, I don't know. Go on, then. I gave you a bid on the last one. You tell me what you want for this one. 50 quid. 50 quid. Stick it on the van. Yep, so we'll have job. that. Thank yep, you. Thank you. Another one bought. Thank you. Cool. Lovely. Drew's visit to property developer Nick has unearthed some good pieces for his business, but Nick also buys and sells old cars. I've been trying to ignore it since I walked in here, the 2CV. Oh, dear. Drew's like a lamb to the slaughter. Ha-ha. Uh -huh. This of my could be yours. Of... Oh, is it for sale? It's for sale. God, it's not, is it? That is. Oh. Another car in the offing and another chance for Drew to beat down his obsession. If completely restored, this iconic car could drive home a price of three thousand pounds. What state's the chassis in? Well, that's good. You know, it's been wouldn't... patched over. I think I said an odd repair. I purchased a Citroen probably about nine, ten months ago. At one stage, I was going to give it to my son. Let's have a look at the chassis. It's had a great big sheet Go right across the middle of the chassis. Just a great big plate over the whole thing. The chassis rot like hell. Wouldn't take much to MOT it, especially with the workshop really? here. There's not many of them around. Some people hate them. I really like them. This is exactly the same as the first two CV I had. I've had quite a few of these. It's a um, 1986 two-cylinder. No, I do like them. I like the sort of peasantness about them. Drew's carbine demons are definitely back and have found a friend in Nick. I've got to stop just buying cars. Stop next week. Stop next week. Buy this, Buy this one. 41,000, I say the mileage is original, look in the condition of the interior. So what would you want for it as it stands, then? <clears throat> I think probably as it stood, 750. 750, ooh. With an MOT, 1,000 pounds. That's how confident I am. That wouldn't take that to put it through. I'm tempted, it just seems it's just a bit too much money. I'm sure there's nothing on it which will be detrimental, I think, of a gallon of fuel and a battery and she'll be away. I do, I do like the idea of driving it away with an MOT. Yeah. But I'd, but I'd want to do that for 750 quid. Yeah, well, that's a little bit too cheap for me at the Is moment, it I think. Yeah. A bit too much. <clears throat> I think we could do sort of 900. I'd split you in the middle. What if I come up to eight? 
We're getting there, because if you're, com you're very confident it's going to sell through I'm an MOT. Through, so the MOT itself will cost me £54. For a Is that what it costs now for yeah. a test? Eight fifty, and then you paid for the MOT at eight. MOT'd. Drive it away. Drive it away. Another car bought. Just what I need. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't, I can't help it. It's an addiction. So you're addicted to something. Yeah, I'm addicted to rust. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Current score, car buying demons two, Drew still zero. Some of the things today perhaps I've broken even on. Odd one, I've made a slight loss, but a couple of the others I've made a slight profit. So overall on the day, I'm very, very happy. And as they leave, Nick tips them off with the name of another collector in the area, who they plan to visit the very next day. Yeah, thanks, thanks very much. Enjoyed Have it. a safe trip, and I hope tomorrow goes well. Will do. Cheers. Thanks, Thank you, Nick. Cheers. Thank you. Take care. So, that was a good day. Enjoyed that. Yeah. Bought a little bit, paid too much for the clock. And the little sign, general waiting area. I could put that in the workshop. Waiting. <laughs> General waiting around and Gavin and Julian having a fag area. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. So the turnstile, was it heavy? <laughs> Strangely, yes. I wouldn't know. As soon as I saw you going to load that, I thought, I've got some important business in the kitchen with a kettle. As Drew and Julian finish up with their first collector, Rebecca is back home preparing a nice helping of humble pie. The shields that Drew bought came in to the showroom on the Friday. And I'll eat my words, um, we sold one on the Saturday. <laughs> Drew's won again. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so um, that's going into the new nightclub in Clanroost. Clanroost is a small town just a few miles away from Conway. So Rebecca delivers the shield herself to landlady of Llewellyn's Bar and Club, Shirley. Hi, Hi, Shirley. Oh. How are you? Thank you. Great. It's really good to see you. And you? Drew well, sends his regards. Oh, how's he getting on? He's all right. He's just busy. Bye. Wonderful. Where are you thinking of putting it? I don't know. I thought on the stone over there. OK. You hold it for me. Yeah. <laughs> Here, have a look. Thanks. Oh, yeah, that'll be OK, won't it? Fantastic. Oh, that looks that Does that looks look great. good? Yeah, I think that's going to be good. Fantastic. So why is... Drew, still on a mission to look for armour... I was got enough. on a mission for something, haven't I? Yes. <laughs> um, it, the theme is Llewellyn, so it's King, the great King Llewellyn, because he's connected to this town. Yeah. So he's looking for shields, if we can get them with that sort of heraldry on it, anything really mm -hmm. that's connected to Llewellyn. If I can leave the shield here, is yeah. that all right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. It looks rather nice on the red, actually. It does, actually, yes. Yeah. Drew and Julian are on their way to Great Yarmouth to meet their second collectors of the trip, Ernie and his wife, Karen, who run a very unusual museum. Obviously, we're a hairy museum and um, gift shop and everything else as well, so people can come in and see everything being made from start to finish. If we had to replace anything around it here, we had to a rib of an old ship or something like that, you know, you couldn't put a new piece of wood in anywhere, so had to come from underwater at sea. As well as all things herring, the place is filled with marine treasures, many of which keen diver and beachcomber Ernie has found himself. Well, this guy today has got for sale... He's got a museum of, of all things, herrings. Fish. Herrings. No, it's herring kipper. Yeah, smoked herring is a kipper. It's a kipper? Yeah. Also, now kipper alike. Hi there. So Karen. Hi, yes. Hi, I'm Drew. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Karen Hi. is Hi. Ernie's wife. Pleased Met her as we first got there because Ernie was doing an art class. Uh, so we're just going to hang around, wait till he's finished doing that. Amazing place you've got here. Yeah, it's lovely. This place, an old herring curing works. Um, it's roughly 300 years old, and it's all made out of old shipwreck timbers. And we actually back onto the old medieval wall of Yarmouth, which is 700 years old. Ernie, my husband, does all the um, paintings and carvings. Looks like somebody we know. 
It does, actually. <laughs> it does. Yeah. You're not a fisherman, are you? No, no. Strange, like, no it's a fisherman's water. friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bizarre place, the inside of the museum. It literally is where they smoke the herrings. So every time you look up the sort of 20, 30 feet above you of these little bars where they'd hang thousands of herrings to smoke. Is, is, is there anything in here that's for sale or...? Yeah. Well, everything. Yeah. Everything. So everything in the building is for sale. There's, yeah. There's nothing off limits. Not really, no. Not. Karen is willing to show Drew around, but she can't sell anything until consulting with Ernie, who has an attachment to his entire collection. I'd like to sell, because with the money we could have more holidays and a little bit more time off. <laughs> this one um, came out of a dike. Um, was that way up in the mud, so obviously the top's well-preserved. Yeah. But then the bottom, because it'd been up with the tide going in and out on it and the dikes, yeah. um, the bottom had rotted away, so we had the bottom repaired, yeah. which was very, very expensive to get the same wood. Sea trunks like these were used in the 18th century by sailors as a place to keep their possessions. Values vary enormously, but a rare example like this could fetch around £1,500. Is that real? Yes, that oh, yeah, checks yeah. Out, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. this carving here yeah. is, I would say, older. And then, yeah. plus, see, that bit there, yeah. that's just different. It's obvious. It sort yeah. of jumps straight yeah. out at you. Is this something that's for sale? Um, I think so, yeah. Karen would love to sell off the old trunk and buy some new rolling luggage, but she must still wait for Ernie. That's the skull of a, of a whale. That's right, yeah. That's still got the blowhole blow in it. Blowhole of a whale yeah. there. It's called the lucky seat. The lucky seat. Yeah. People sit on there and hope to win the lottery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. yeah. Most of the stuff we've got in here has come up with a herring. I've seen a few of these old church pews you've got around as well, so mm. do I need to talk to Ernie about these as well? Yeah. Yeah? This could be a great find. 19th century pews made of pitch pine are quite common on the salvage circuit but an 18th century oak version like this is rare and could easily bring in excess of 400 pounds. How many have you got? Uh, three that size. You've got three with this carving on the, on the uh, ends? Uh, I don't know if they've all got both ends. This one has, yeah. Yeah. Um, they're actually sort of single-ended more than anything yeah, because they're, yeah. this, this is the side that's been against the, the wall. The wall, yeah, the church, yeah. 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 And they're a good size and yeah. the carving on them is quite nice. Yeah. I don't know if all three are like that. I know that one is. That okay. one is. I think the one outside's not as good. I think that one there's a bit longer. Get a better look at that end. There you go. How's that? <coughs> Did you say you had more of these? Yeah, there's that one in there, and there's yeah. another one outside. One outside. Yeah, okay, there. we can see it in the light a bit yeah. better. So you want to put this one back in, Jules? I'm assuming this wasn't driftwood. <laughs> Definitely not. Where do you find these? Uh, they come out of a local church. No. I'm going to have a quick look at the other one while I'm just stood there, just to try and remember. Yeah. The shape to see if yeah. they match or see if it's three odd ends. That's one ended, yeah? Yeah, single ended as well. Do you want to lift that down? I'm trying to see the two together. Yeah, that which is quite normal is the carvings on the ends of these pews, the little fleur de lis on the end are different. Mm. And that's that that is normal. Yeah. So each not each pew is individual, but there's just slight differences yeah. between them. Okay. That end's not very good on that uh, one. Ah yeah, that one's oh dear, yes. Yeah. You've got those of them. It's got yeah, more than a dose of woodworm. <laughs> was it? Oh, yeah. That has, yeah. Oh, yeah. They've eaten it away completely. Yeah. That's beyond help. Maybe do something with the top, but the rest of it's beyond help. So I think we're down to two and a half pews. So far, Drew has spotted several items he'd like to take home, but experience tells him that collectors are notoriously difficult to deal with, and Ernie is still nowhere to be seen. Frustrating, as there are treasures everywhere. Is that the um, coat of arms? Coat of arms for the yes, town. Cut, yeah, and so this is one we think came off um, the Wellington Pier when they were taking it to pieces. So you got this from the seafront, from the. Yeah. Did you salvage any other parts? Anything um, else come from there? Well, uh, there's lots of bits and pieces sort of turn up, but the one we have got we use as a water fountain, which is one of the terracotta urns that were all a whale on the seafront years ago. They're all gone now. Drew has a suspicion that this could be a rare Victorian terracotta urn worth thousands of pounds. He snaps a photo and sets the team back home sleuthing. Good morning, Drew Pritchards. Oh, hi, it's me. Oh, hello. Oh, hi. I've just sent some pictures through. He wants us to find out a bit more about it. Is that right? There we go, yeah. Um, have you managed to look at the bit, you know, the ropes wrapped around the bottom? For the maker's mark? Yeah. Okay. It's right now. All right, mate, I've got it. It's not being there now. 
That's the pier cap it's been sat on. Yeah. But there should be a base, a little square base like this that would have sat on top of that. Is that still attached to that urn? Couldn't tell you. OK. So if we lift it... Yeah. Do you want to have a look? With a square? Yeah. OK. One, two... Watch your back! No. The urn I found in the corner there, um is uh, a 19th century one. It's a Tarza urn, highly decorated, terracotta. Uh, it would have had um, a base section to it, a small square plinth base. And then as the body comes down and underneath the body, there's the sockle, which is the, the section that attaches to the main body of the urn. No. Nothing? No. OK, watch your fingers. No. It goes from oh, there to around. There's a piece missing. About that bit, yeah. There's that piece, saying, yeah. then there's a sockle that comes yeah. down, yeah. then there's the base, then and it then fits that on would there. have sat there's on that. There's a square bit. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what's missing? What? The base. There's no base. And there's no base. Are you going to buy anyway? No. There's no base. I so. said that. That's why the rope yeah. was wrapped around the bottom. So we've been... I know. Half an hour. Shall I charge you by the hour? Yes. <laughs> OK, should yeah. we carry on? Back through, yeah? Yeah. Back through. Okay. Finally, Ernie shows up. And Drew hopes he can begin negotiations with this compulsive collector. Hi, Ernie. Hi, yeah. Hi, how are you doing? All right, sir. Good, good. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, all right, mate. Hi, you're right. Julian. Um, we've had good had a good look around. I know yeah. you've been busy. So there's yeah. a couple of things I wanted to ask you about. Uh, whether a whether they're for sale uh, and. Uh, what you'd want for them. Sometimes people, when they come up to you first, are very much on the defensive when you're trying to buy something. So it's best to try and get to know them first. We're not going to have that opportunity with Ernie. It's just straight in and I want to buy that and this is how much. Sometimes tricky. The box. Yeah, I like this. You like that? Yeah, let me get the other end. You That's a heavy old job, that one, isn't it? It eh? is. Yeah. That's a lovely old box, eh? Um, cool, I've had that, what? Thirty odd year, I suppose, are we? Yeah, Some other. Steel work on the back's lovely, isn't it? Got attached to it over the years, to be honest with you. So is, uh, this, is, this some, is this something for sale or is it not for sale? Oh, I don't know. I suppose if the price is right, you know, one might sort of consider it, really. Well, um, but uh, I think I know what you're going to ask for it. A couple of thousand, some of like that. Mm. It's such a lovely thing yeah. to own. But at two thousand pounds, I can't buy it. When it comes down to the artefacts, and especially if they mean something to him, then I wouldn't even propose to put a price on them. He has to do that himself, cos whatever I put on him, he'd say, well, no, you, I wouldn't let it go for that, so... Well, you're too cheap, you see. You tell them, <laughs> you tell them too cheap. You know, you've got to, you know, swing it a bit. <laughs> the other thing that I'm interested in is, is this um, church pew here. You've got a, three of these. Yeah. Um, they are, unfortunately, they're, they're great. I really like them, but on this end of all of them, that's been against the wall, and you can see where half of the carving was never there. No, that was designed no. to go flat against the wall, and then the plaster was, was there. But what I was wondering, what are they for sale? And if so, what would you want for them? Say for these two, so it's for the two good ones, and then there's a sort of the restoration project outside. So I just wondered if you had any idea what you'd like for them. Never thought about it. Um, I didn't think for a minute you'd pick on the... All the other stuff around here. Right. <laughs> There's so much stuff here. I know to I know, pick a yeah. church pew out of a, out of oh, a Herring yeah. Museum That's right, is yeah. a little odd, I know. I can't say, really. Um, what about you, girl? Have you got any ideas? No. Mm. Would you want me to give you a bid on them, then? Yeah, go on. make life yeah. easier for you? Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll start from your end. If these had the carvings to both sides, we'd probably pay about £250 per pew because they're just a huge difference. Mm. But that makes a massive difference. So what I'm prepared to do is £100 each for these pews and I'd give you £50 each for the rest... £50 for the restoration project and any other pieces that you have. But that is a restoration project. I'm going to have to probably spend 100 on that one to make it structurally sound. You mean the third one? The third one, yeah. So that would be 250 for the three pews. Right. Up to you. For 250 quid? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't match up. That wouldn't know. go? No. OK. No. I just tend to think of all the people that are sat on and things like that, you see. OK, well, it's... again, there's a bit of history. We ain't doing too good in the way of selling and buying, are we? <laughs> 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 so what, what would you be happy with? What would I be happy with? I don't know. I, I, I tend to think I'd, 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 uh, 
been happy with 300 quid for each one. You know, maybe it's a bit too far out. That's yeah. a bit steep. Tears, tears. Yeah. What if I said we'd go for the three? Can we do 350? What for all three? Yeah. No, no. Tell you what, then, 350 and you keep the one outside. <laughs> 350. So it's 100, 175 a piece. It's like giving yeah. you a bit of a profit on them. Yeah. No. Nah, no. Get enough. No. Ernie is uh, tough to deal with, and uh, the price is the price, and it's going to be tricky to move him. I can't give you six. I can't, no, give, you can't six give you six. I can't give you six hundred quid to them. I'd like to buy them. I do want because yeah. I know y eventually it's all going to come on the market. So, and I don't get into this neck of the woods very often. Well, I think about it. I don't know. It's hard to part with these things. You see, um, mm. there are some things that Ernie won't part with. It'd be like cutting his left arm off. But I, um, oh, I definitely would. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll keep two. You buy that one. Okay. What do you want for just the one then? I want 250 really, but do you, what do you reckon? 230. 230. 230, and that's it. Top dollar. I'm going to make like that much. That's it. There's just a little bit in it for me. <laughs> yeah, no, do I believe that? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Deal? 230. 230. All right. Lovely. Nice one. Thank you, Ernie. Good. Right. <laughs> Let's get her outside. <laughs> Ernie, we're done. OK. Oh, we're lovely. Get off. Anyway, look, really Thank nice to meet much. you. Thank you very much. It's lovely to meet you, too. Thanks for Thank all the you. tea. Ernie, Thank been you. a pleasure. Thank you. Lovely to really meet you. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. There you go, pal. Cheers, mate. Interesting place they've got there. Yeah. Ernie and Karen, they were nice people, weren't they? They were nice people, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Ernie did have a striking resemblance to a purveyor of extremely fine fish snacks. <laughs> yes, he did, actually, I that is. I think he's probably a captain. Do you reckon? Yes. You think he's a captain? Wow. Well. <laughs> oh, dear. Though the Herring Museum provided only one catch for the crew back home, Drew is heading back with a good haul from a three-day road trip and a nervous announcement for Rebecca regarding his growing collection of cars. <laughs> Lots of nice new stock. You'll like this. It's very nice. That's the sort of thing. There's hardly anything, if anything at all, to do to that. Take all the old bits of wire off it and just give it a very small clean. I don't really want much done to it at all. One of your customers might be interested in that for uh, a restaurant. Oh, brilliant. OK. Yeah. It's not heavy, Gavin. You all right with it? Yeah. I know we've got hundreds of pews in stock, but... I bought this one. It needs work to this end, as you can see. Mm. This came out of a herring museum. Herring? Herring. Fish. 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 Herring Food. the bird. Herring. <laughs> I thought you said herring. Flying fish. I know we've got, like, what, 300 pews in stock? Yeah, but not like this one. No, it's just a nice this one. Is... It's got a bit of age to it as well, particularly to the ends and the back. Maybe the seat's been replaced, but it's quite an early one underneath all that. How old? 1700s. Gosh. Yeah. Great. Put on the shop entrance. Yeah. We and should charge admission. And shouldn't charge we? admission. North Wales is only free museum. <laughs> yeah, needs a little bit of work, so we'll leave it straight out of here. It'll go to Paul, get it welded up. Yeah. Just need got a little crack on there. <laughs> what do you think? Just yep. a clean, got a little bit of a chip in there, Gav. So just a wash and a little dab of paint, and that one's ready to go. The best thing we got was this 24 hour electric clock. Fantastic. Lovely. It works. I'm just deciding whether to leave it in the paint, strip it, or polish it. I'm not sure what to do with it yet. Really don't know. What do you think? Just leave it in the tin. I think so. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I need to rewire it, Ola. I just need you to check the wiring on it. Yeah, that's not a problem. It works. At least it, if it works, that's the biggest problem. It works, but yeah. it's not so clever, the wiring, is it? So what I'd say is let's not plug it in. We know it works. We've got time yeah. to do that. We know it works. We've seen it working. All straight to you, mate. All right, nice one. And that's it. Really? <laughs> Wait for it. Oh, yeah. I bought a car. Another car? Yes. 
Yeah, it's a good car. It's a Citroen 2CV. Coming with an MOT. It's low mileage, really original, great condition. It's just desperate for a clean and a polish. How many cars can can we have? We'll put it in the shop. It's only teeny, so we'll stick it in the shop and get it sold. I dread the day that our yard at home ends up looking like some of the yards Drew's described to me that he finds when he's out on the road. Should we have a cup of tea? Keeping clear of a domestic, Restorer Gavin gets to work on the 18th century pew from the Herring Museum. This side would have been into the wall. So we just have to make the best of what we can out of it. Oh, that's all right. That's as good as, that's as, good as it's going to get. It's not bad. I definitely think it's got more age to it. This here, mm. the way that narrows down there. I think we'll go with mid-18th century. And it's just a matter of days before the items begin to sell. The clock's been collected in the morning um, and it's on the way to Torquay, to a, a private residence. And there we go. It'll be a while before Drew can take delivery of his prized 2CV, but he's more than happy to make do until then with his purchase from Hamish. I bought recently a Series 1 Land Rover, and today we've brought it up here to see a friend of mine, John Craddock, to get it valued. John Craddock is uh, Mr Land Rover. That's a light one, Drew. Yep. 52, 53. It's the moment of truth. Has Drew's love of cars overtaken his business instinct? Aluminium bulkhead. Yep. You don't see many of them. God, that's beautiful. I've never seen one that nice. Really? Really. Didn't know it was that rare. They only made them in 52, late 52, October, November. Wow. They are very, very desirable. Rebecca is intrigued to hear John's evaluation. Will she be eating another slice of humble pie? Chassis is nice, isn't it? Yeah. You've got an, an engine that runs. Mm. Bolt the wings back on, bit of welding on the front dumb irons. You put that back together, yeah. it's gonna be worth two and a half thousand, I'd have thought. But that bulkhead, that's where the money is. What's it worth? I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna take it off, but. I could see that bulkhead making a thousand pounds. Fantastic. I can't wait to get it home and start messing around with it over the weekend. I just, just can't wait and go to the garage and just go into full Land Rover world and start tinkering and messing with it. And just, that's the fun. For me, that's the fun. That's the bit why I like these old cars. It's like I can go in there and do it myself. Don't trust me. I do, we do trust right, so you, How we much do. stuff do we sell a year? A lot. Thousands of items. A lot. A Who lot. does all the buying of these items? You, darling. Yes. OK, thank, thank you very much. So, thank you very much. So who's right and who's wrong? You're right, darling. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.